Yeah, a little Nas. Nice. Love that song. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 6 a.m. hour here on CBS 8 Morning. So glad you're with us. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Netta E. Rompour. And yes, that, glad you're with us. It's 2222 two, two, two today. I just it realized that. Like, right. wait a minute. It's February 2nd. How unique is that? We haven't had something like that since cool. uh, January 11th of 2011, 11. right? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so pretty we'll unique We'll get it day. again, though. 22222 two, 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 two is oh, also happening yeah. this month. On the 22nd. Yes. In 20 days. So something to look forward to there. <laughs> uh, as you're getting out the door here, uh, windbreaker kind of day here today because those winds are going to be picking up here. Let's check in with Evan. That's right. Good morning to you. Santa Ana winds back in the forecast today into tonight is really when we see those winds peak. Take a look at where your gusts are as we speak. Mostly single digits, but still offshore flow is preventing the development of any thick clouds out there. And that's why your temperatures may be a bit chilly as you kick off the morning. Good idea to have that jacket with you before the sun comes up. But by the time we see that happen, we're going to see upper 60s along the coastline, mid 60s for your inland valleys and 40s for your mountains. Looks like we've got mid 60s as well for your deserts. We'll talk about how those Santa Ana winds are going to peak this afternoon and what it means for the remainder of the week in just a bit. Let's talk about traffic though as we start off your Wednesday morning. Here's the view outside. Looks like it is smooth sailing on the roads this morning. No crashes or collisions to report as we start off your six o'clock hour. Back to you. Thank you, Evan. Family and friends this morning remembering a 14 year old who was shot and killed while he was walking home from school in the Mount Hope area. Just so young here, he held a vigil for Eric Balanzar. This comes as police have made arrests in his murder. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live outside San Diego Police Headquarters now with an update for us. Good morning. Good morning to you both. A tragic life of a young uh, a life taken way too soon. So 14 year old Eric Balanzar attended King Chavez High School in downtown San Diego. Now at the vigil last night, the family tells us a little bit more of what happened. He was walking home from school with friends when gunshots rung out. They remember his life and say he had so many dreams ahead of him that are now gone. He liked to go DJ on the weekends, spend time with his family, with his brother. Um, it's a great loss. It's, it's something really painful for everyone because we loved him. Now, San Diego police say at least one shot was fired from a silver SUV near J Street and 36 just after 4 o'clock. Eric was the only person shot and killed. Someone noticed the plate number as the vehicle sped away and reported it to police. Three men and one 17 year old boy were then arrested about an hour later. The family says they don't know if the police have arrested the right people, but they want those who shot Eric held responsible for his death. As the family tries to make sense of what happened to Eric, they're remaining strong as they remember his life and how much he meant to them. Eric's aunt says her family is devastated, and now that four people are in custody, they hope to get some closure and justice for Eric. Now, as the police continues to investigate exactly what happened, the family is asking the community for some support. They set up a GoFundMe to help with those funeral costs. We have that link on CBS8.com. You can click the help button if you want to do that. I'm Dana Marie McNichol live in San Diego. I'll send it back to you. Dana Marie, thank you. It has been 20 years since the kidnapping and murder of Danielle Van Dam, a horrific crime that many San Diegans will never forget. The seven year old Van Dam was taken from her bedroom in the middle of the night by neighbor David Westerfield. Her body was later found off Dehisa Road in El Cajon. The high profile trial saw Westerfield receive the death sentence, but since California suspended the death penalty, it's unlikely he will ever be put to death. Well, Scripps Health believes San Diego's Omicron surge will wind down by early March. This estimate is based on predictive models they have used since the beginning of the pandemic. They say the models have been fairly accurate for each COVID variant. Scripps CEO says Omicron peaked in hospitals about two weeks ago. Our predictions now show over the course of the rest of February into at least the beginning of March, we're going to see what we would call a long tail. He added that this decline will provide much needed relief for overworked hospitals and allow them to address other patient concerns like delayed surgeries. The World Health Organization says the Omicron subvariant, known as Stealth Omicron, is rapidly replacing the original in many parts of the world. The BA2 strain is already the leading cause of COVID infections in the Philippines, Qatar, India, and Denmark. However, the WHO says early data suggests it doesn't cause severe disease any more than Omicron. Children younger than five years old could soon be eligible for a COVID vaccine. 
Pfizer asked the FDA for that emergency use authorization. And this morning, we're going to take a closer look at the impact on local families. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live outside Rady Children's Hospital. It's a decision many parents now have to make. And what are physicians saying about it? Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, and physicians say, at least the one that we spoke with, that the vaccine benefits outweigh any potential side effects and that this age group actually shows less side effects than older children. And still, though, we are seeing some hesitancy from some parents and other parents are likely to get the vaccine for their child right away. Take a listen. I feel just devastated and feel so responsible for it being my fault and that mom guilt is is real. And that was a mother of a young two year old who again has a husband who's immunocompromised and would not really want to see potentially their two year old get their husband sick. And so they're looking forward to getting this vaccine. Now Pfizer has asked the FDA for emergency use authorization. It is a two dose vaccine for children ages six months to five years old. It's not the same dosage as what adults received. In fact, it's one tenth of what adults receive. But when all is said and done with the emergency use process, this vaccine could be available by the end of the month or the start of month for that age group. Now, according to a survey from the Kaiser Family Foundation, 31% of parents will get their child vaccinated right away. That's up from 20% in July. CBS 8 spoke with Rady Children's doctor and FDA vaccine advisory panelist Dr. Mark Sawyer about this development, and he says again, it is a much safer bet based on science and the data to get the vaccine than it is to risk COVID. We have so much experience immunizing babies starting at birth and certainly at two, four and six months of age. Pediatricians uh, appreciate the value of the vaccine and when they do the calculation of the risk of the vaccine versus the risk of the disease, you decide to use the vaccine because it prevents much more, many more problems than it causes. And for more information on the emergency use authorization process and to get an idea of where you can get your toddler vaccinated when it and if and when it does receive that authorization, you can go to our website, CBS8.com and click on that story link. Eric and Netta. All right, Chris, thanks for the update. New regulations for short term rentals in the city of San Diego are now on hold. The rules were supposed to take effect in July, but now could be until the end of the year. That's because the California Coastal Commission says they need more time to review the regulations. The ordinance includes a lottery based system for licenses to operate. There will also be a 1% cap of San Diego's housing supply. There's an exception, though, for Mission Beach, which has a long history of vacation rentals. That neighborhood will be capped at 30%. All right, let's check in with Evan. So another cloudy kind of day or what's going to happen? So the clouds are still there in some spots, but they're clearing out as we speak, and that's because those winds are starting to pick up. So right now, partly cloudy, and the clouds that we see right now are mainly high clouds. So we're moving toward a day of sunny conditions almost across the board. Looks like deserts could encounter just a few clouds over the last hour or so. We've seen some of them inland as well, but temperatures are going to warm up along the coast and through your inland valleys. We've got mid and upper 60 degree temperatures looking very nice, cooling down by a few degrees for your mountains and your desert. So today is the day those Santa Ana's pick back up in the forecast. It sounds like we have been talking about these winds for a long time now, and that's because they come and they go and they come and they go and they calm down in between. But today is going to be the day where they peak in the 40 and 50 mile per hour range toward your mountains and even through some of your inland valleys. So as we said earlier, Right now, those clouds are continuing to dissipate. We're moving toward a pretty clear start to your morning. In turn, temperatures are chilly out there. We've got 40s, a couple 30s to note on there. 36 for Ramona, 44 for Carlsbad, and 45 for Oceanside as we speak. Down south, Chula Vista, not doing too bad at 48 degrees. Very nice and uh, starting to see that those temperatures are going to warm up into the afternoon. So as we mentioned, Next couple hours still going to be pretty chilly out there, but by 10 a.m. We're in the mid and upper 50s, mid 60s by noon, upper 60s by 2 p.m. with a lot of sunshine lasting throughout the day and really lasting throughout the week into next week. We've got a nice warm up trend on the way. Let's talk about what's going on in traffic this morning. So far, things are pretty calm on the roads to start off the day. Looks like there are a couple spots, especially toward uh, about the La Mesa area where there are some slightly slower speeds, maybe a little additional volume on the roads. But as you can see here, no crashes or collisions 
conditions to note as we head through the six o'clock hour. Just a couple spots on there where we have some construction taking place. Back to you, Eric and Etta. All right, new this morning. It is official. The Washington football team has a new name. We are the, the commander. OK, there you go. They are the commanders. The new name might have been the worst kept secret in sports, though. Look at that. The commanders was spotted at their stadium last night, so it was already out there before this morning's big announcement. You know, they were so pumped to release that video, oh, yeah. the hype video, but there was a chopper that was <laughs> flying overhead and <laughs> caught it in advance. Yeah, zoomed in <laughs> on one of the banners that was not covered up and it said, yeah, commander. So everyone yeah. knew about it going into this, but nonetheless, the Washington Commanders okay. instead of the Washington football team, as they've been known for uh, you know a while here. Right, right. Um, Ken messaged me and said, "Sounds more like a soccer or a hockey team name." Does so it? Okay. Ken's not super pumped about it. Go Commanders! Go Commanders! Okay, I mean, Command it's, this it's game. commanding. Like yeah. it's it's got a. I can see the reason behind that choice. I like the jerseys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good colors. 